Throughout the previous 40 years, Lucky Survivor Laurie Strahd has been preparing herself for another encounter with the insane serial murderer Michael Myers because she still fears facing the guy who ruined her life. In 2018, four agonizing decades following the carnage in Haddonfield and the horrifying events of Halloween in 1978, her worries materialize as Myers breaks free from Dr. Sartain's control at Smith's Grove Sanitarium Psychiatric Hospital. Since Michael's butcher knife now has the last word, Laurie is resolved to stand up for herself and permanently rid the village of the horror, even though no one appears to think that pure evil exists. But does Laurie possess the courage to face the boogeyman and look him in the eye? Let's watch that in the Halloween movie recap now. Welcome to Movie Spotlight. True crime podcasters Aaron Corey and Dana Haynes meet notorious serial killer Michael Myers on October 29, 2018 at Smith's Grove Psychiatric Hospital. Myers has been institutionalized for 40 years after going on a killing spree in Haddonfield and is getting ready to be transferred to a maximum security prison. After being shot 40 years earlier from the Doyle House balcony by Dr. Samuel Loomis, Michael was captured. Following Dr. Loomis' passing, Michael's new psychiatrist, Dr. Ranbir Sartain, informs them that although Michael can speak, but he prefers not to. Dana captures the event as Aaron approaches Michael and talks to him, but is unable to convince him to respond despite displaying his mask and referring Laurie Strode. After leaving Smith's Grove Sanitarium, the two journalists go to Laurie's home a dilapidated and well-guarded farmstead where they pay her to grant them an interview, which she grudgingly accepts. For the past 40 years, Laurie has been coping with post-traumatic stress disorder and getting ready for Michael's inevitable return. Her emotions have led to two unsuccessful marriages and early loss of custody of her daughter, Karen. To encourage Michael to talk before he is moved to the high-security jail, Aaron and Dana tell Laurie they are interested in learning why Michael killed people in 1978. So, they request her to meet him. Laurie declines the request and takes the money they promised and throws them out of her house. Laurie's connection with her daughter Karen, whom the state removed from her when Laurie was 12, is rough. Laurie's granddaughter Allison tries to stay in touch with her grandmother. Allison, Laurie's granddaughter, and Karen's daughter dispels the local myth that Michael is Laurie's brother and shares with her two friends the strain her family faces due to her grandmother's history when they go to school in Haddonfield. When Allison looks out the window during the class, she notices Laurie observing her. When she sees her grandmother, she receives the $3,000 Aaron and Dana gave her and is told to enjoy herself. Dr. Satin insists on going with Michael, and as the transport is being ready and the patients are being placed onto the bus, the bus leaves. Laurie from far away observes this while staying in her car. As Allison requested, Laurie shows up at Karen's family dinner when Allison's boyfriend is also there, and she immediately has a panic attack. Allison consoles Laurie. Following Laurie's departure, Karen tells Allison about her early years. Karen claims that at the age of eight, she picked up gun skills, learned how to fight, and started having nightmares about the basement. When Karen was 12 years old, according to her, social services arrived and took her away from her mother, Laurie. And ever since, she has dedicated her entire life to overcoming the neurosis and paranoia she carried around with her. When her dad and his kids see the bus while driving down the street, they stop to look at the security officers who were slain. The prisoners were strewn across the road, and the bus transport crashed in the ditch. As the father is going nowhere, his kid takes a rival out of the vehicle and runs into a security guard who is shot to death and instructs him to run. As he examines the bus, Dr. Sartain startles him, and he unintentionally shoots him in the shoulder. He calls the police as he runs back to the truck 
and Michael inside strangles him from the back seat. On October 31st, Michael witnesses Aaron and Dana visiting his sister Judith's dorm in the morning. Sheriff Frank Hawkins informs a deputy that Michael Myers broke out of the transport and will undoubtedly return to Haddonfield to complete the work he began four years before. When Aaron and Dana get to the gas station, Aaron goes inside to pay for the gas and leaves Dana to use the restroom. After a while, Aaron finds a dead mechanic minus his overalls and a cashier with his jaw ripped open inside the abandoned station. In the meantime, Michael has started attacking Dana in the restroom. As Aaron arrives to save Dana, Michael attacks him in the toilet and kills Aaron by repeatedly hitting him against the door and then strangling Dana to death. Michael looks over at their car, finds his mask, and puts it on. When Laurie finds out about Michael's escape, Laurie breaks into Karen's home to expose her lack of security and tries to alert Karen, but Karen ignores her and tells Laurie to move on. Laurie leaves after a brief disagreement about Michael with Karen and her husband Ray, and she makes it to the gas station just in time to see Aaron and Dana's bodies being found. Michael strolls down a busy Haddonfield street on Halloween night where kids and families are trick or treating. He makes his way to a shed behind a house where he steals a hammer and enters to murder the lone resident. He kills her and swaps the hammer out for a kitchen knife and goes to the house next door, slitting the throat of another woman with a knife. While attending a school-sponsored Halloween party with her pals, Allison gets a call from Vicky requesting her to come over as soon as her babysitter Julian nods off. Laurie was calling to tell Allison to go home. After getting inside the party hall after a call with her friend, Allison discovers her boyfriend Cameron is unfaithful. She fights with her boyfriend Cameron, who throws her phone. When Dave, Vicky's boyfriend, arrives, Julian tells her that he saw a man wearing a mask standing in the doorway. But Vicky brushes it off as a figment of his mind and sends Julian to bed. At Julian's suggestion, Vicky investigates the closet. When she opens the door, Michael, who is hidden inside, attacks her. Julian informs Dave and he leaves the house and calls the police. While driving her truck around the neighborhood, Laurie hears the dispatch call over her CB radio and quickly heads to the residence where Sheriff Hawkins is conducting an investigation. The sheriff discovers Vicky's body and Dave's body. Outside the house, Laurie shoots Michael through a window from down, but she doesn't realize it's just his reflection in a mirror. Hawkins and Laurie discover Michael while on patrol behind the house's next door. Laurie shoots him, but Michael has vanished as she returns the corner. Meanwhile, Hawkins meets Dr. Sarton in search of Michael. Allison breaks up with her boyfriend at the party and has her buddy Oscar walk her home. Hawkins and Dr. Sarton are searching for Michael together. On the other hand, Laurie and Karen are still trying to connect Allison through a call and looking for her. Oscar follows when Allison declines his advances and notices Michael observing him. Oscar tries to run away, but Michael impales him after he gets stuck on a fence. After returning around, Allison discovers Oscar's body and is pursued by Michael until she seeks safety in a nearby residence. When Karen and Ray get to Laurie's defense house, they wait for Allison to show up. Meanwhile, Hawkins and Dr. Sarte inform Allison while looking for Michael, Allison was found with the help of neighbors around and they informed the police about Allison's whereabouts. Despite Dr. Sarte's objections, Hawkins finds Michael, runs him over with the police SUV, and exits the car to shoot Michael at the close range. Before removing Michael's mask and donning it, Dr. Sartin kills Hawkins by stabbing him in the throat with a sword concealed inside a pen. It comes out that he planned Michael's escape so that he could see him in the wild. To bring Michael and Addison back together, Dr. Sartin loads Michael into the back of the car and heads to Laurie's house. Allison guessed Dr. Sartin's intentions. 
She lied to Dr. Sartain that Michael spoke to her. Simultaneously, Michael regained consciousness and took back his mask. Distracted by her insistence on knowing what Michael said, Michael breaches the security barrier, pushes Dr. Sartain from the car and stomps on his head as Allison runs on foot. Afterward, Michael murders the two policemen who were standing outside Laurie's house when they saw Hawkins' car and drove over to see how he was doing. In addition, Ray learns about their deaths when he goes outside Laurie's house to see police officers. Michael chokes Ray as he emerges from behind him. Laurie locks and bars the front door, notifying Karen of Michael's presence and sending her into the concealed safe room. After smashing through the door's glass panels, Michael assaults Laurie. Laurie manages to get away by shooting Michael in the hand with the shotgun, removing two fingers and making him back up. Laurie uses security gates to close off each area as she monitors her home room by room. Upstairs, Laurie runs into Michael. Allison comes just in time to see Laurie fall off the balcony and Michael knives her. Laurie is gone when he looks into it. So Allison enters the safe room with Karen, who alerts Michael in a tricky way. Karen stuns him as soon as he appears by shooting him with a firearm. Michael is thrown inside the safe room as Laurie emerges from the shadows and strikes him. After leaving the safe room with Allison, Michael loses consciousness and grips Karen's ankle. Michael is stabbed by Allison using his knife and they both leave the room. Michael is trapped in the safe room as it fills with the gas until Laurie flips a switch blocking the exit and causing middle bars to spring into place. Michael is inside the room when Laurie fires and Flair endorses it through the bars, setting it on fire. As the house catches fire, Laurie, Karen and Allison flee and board a pickup vehicle driving down the street. As they are led to safety, the three women give each other hugs. I don't think Michael is dead. Stay tuned for Halloween's next part.